We'll start at the top. All right, so in March of 2016, I signed up for an event called Seal Fit Kokoro Class 45, which would take place in six short months. We were the 45th class to ever go through this event. And for those of you that have no idea what Kokoro is, quite simply, it's the world's premier training camp for developing mental toughness. Forged after the US Navy SEAL Hell Week. It is a 50 plus hour event with no sleep led by current and retired Navy SEALs. It was an event that would challenge me physically, mentally, and emotionally more than I had ever experienced. The word Kokoro itself means the merging of heart and mind in action. And I'm gonna take you through the battle and the process that I went through in taking on an event like this. It was the battle inside of my head that was a result of two questions. The first question was, who do I think I am at the age of 40 to take on an event like this? The inner dialogue that we all go through that either tries to protect us when we start to think about things that we truly don't believe that we can do, or that paralyzes us with fear when we start to think about all the things that we actually have to do to accomplish it. The other question was, who do I have to become to not only show up for this event, but to actually complete it, or as Navy SEALs say, to secure Kokoro 45. So it was this question and the five-step process inside of that question that ultimately allowed me to be successful and secure Kokoro 45. So the first step was that I had to get crystal clear on who I needed to become, as well with brutally honest with myself on my current reality. See, the minimum required standard set by SEAL for Kokoro is that I had to do 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, 50 air squats, and 10 strict pull-ups, all with two minutes within each of those movements, and then I had to run one mile in under nine and a half minutes after all of those movements. And then we were also required to complete a CrossFit workout called the MRF in under 70 minutes. The MRF was named after a U.S. Navy SEAL, Lieutenant Murphy, who died in action serving for our country. So at Kokoro 45, this included 100 strict pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 air squats, and then a mile run before and after all of those movements. And if I failed to meet these standards set by SEAL Fit Kokoro in the first 12 hours of the event, I'd be sent home, no questions asked, no opportunity to continue. See, in my mind, I was still the young, fit, 20-year-old college football player. <laughs> My, my reality was I, was I was fat and out of shape. So after getting very clear and honest with my current reality, I was then ready to create a plan, which is step number two. I had to develop a roadmap. I knew that it, in order for me to exceed the standards set by SEAL Fit Kokoro within the first 12 hours and to earn the opportunity to continue to see if I would have what it would take to complete this 50 plus hour event, I would need to lose 45 pounds. I would need to be able to run a half a marathon in my training. I knew that at a minimum, I would have to be able to do 60 push-ups, 60 sit-ups, 60 air squats, and run one mile in seven minutes. I knew as far as the Murph workout goes, I would have to be able to complete that in 60 minutes or less. And I knew that I was gonna have to be able to do all this in a fatigued state, not fresh because that was exactly how they were going to require me to perform these at the event. So after this very clear and sobering image of myself and my current reality and creating this detailed plan, roadmap of who I needed to become, I then had to create a holy cause. <laughs> Because I knew that there's going to be times when I wouldn't want to train. I knew that there would be moments when I would want to stray from my nutrition plan. I knew that there would be 
Moments inside of this event when we would be in the freezing cold ocean in the middle of the night, the water crashing down on us, dead tired, and I'd want to quit. So to combat those thoughts and feelings, I needed a reason big enough and so deep-rooted that I would act and do the necessary work in spite of those thoughts, feelings, and emotions. What I call my holy cause to keep me moving forward towards who I needed to become. You see, for me, <laughs> my holy cause was that if I didn't leave my family, I knew somebody else would. That I needed to show my kids how to set big goals in life and push through that self-defeating talk of who do I think I am. That they need to tune into the process and the question of who do I have to become. Because if I don't leave my family in this way, I know that somebody else is going to. And that's someone else in their life I'm not going to approve of. And so by having this holy cause set and firmly in place, I then needed to take ruthless committed action, which is a four-step commitment. Not level one commitment, but level 10 commitment. Level one commitment would mean allowing myself to take the day off because I didn't feel like training. It would mean allowing myself to have that one piece of pizza because I thought that I deserved it. It would mean getting through to the 36 hour of a 50 plus hour event and telling myself that it's okay to quit. <laughs> Level 10 commitment meant that I would do the necessary required actions in spite of these thoughts and feelings. That I would get through to 36 of this 50 plus hour event and I would drive on and continue because I was committed to securing Kokoro 45. So the last step in this process is that I had to stay present. Because the moment I take my focus off the present and into the past or out into the future is the moment that I elect fear and doubt for me. By staying in the here and now, the present moment, this next step, the next breath, breath allowed me to keep moving forward to, towards who I needed to become. So it was this process that all started with one simple question that took me from the 275 pound version of myself on the left when I first signed up for this event to the 230 pound version of myself on the right. From barely being able to run a mile when I signed up to running that half a marathon in my training from not being able to meet any of the standards set by Seal Fit Kokoro in March, to not only passing, but exceeding those standards in September. From being one of 50 who signed up for this event, to one of 28 that actually was courageous enough to simply show up and attempt it, to one of nine to stand tall at the event, at the end, and secure Kokoro 45, as you see in this video. So I had the story ended here, I would have been successful in my journey of who I have to become. But the nine of us that had just secured Kokoro 45, along with the coaches and the staff, were presented with a very tragic event. But it was also something that truly drove home a lesson for me inside of this process and this question. Just seconds after that video ended, as we were all celebrating, I was, coach, I was uh, hugging coach, um, Mark Devine, a 20-year retired Navy SEAL and founder of SEAL Fit Kokoro. I watched a man that had just finished with us fall 
to the ground and ultimately died just 10 feet in front of me. And so, in this pinnacle moment that I've been dreaming of and thinking of, from the moment I signed up, I watched helplessly as a mother and a wife and those two very beautiful young kids lose an amazing father and husband forever. So this lesson that I talked about just a few moments ago, as I watched Kurt Delegianis die right there in front of me that day, is that the reality that I have, and really each and every one of us in this room, we have two choices in life. First choice is we can allow, we can hold ourselves back and our family back and give in to complacency, and give in to that voice inside of our head that's asking us, who do I think I am? And we can allow that to control us and keep us plain small in life. Or instead, we can choose to take control of our life and our family's life. And instead, we can ask ourselves, who do I have to become? You see, for me, it was Kokoro 45. For you, it might be losing the weight that you've always wanted to lose, or maybe running the marathon that you've always thought about running. It could be achieving financial success that you have always wanted, or maybe quitting your job and starting the business that you've always thought about starting. It could simply be becoming the spouse or the parent that you always hoped to be. So I ask you, and I challenge each and every one of you here today to ask yourself, What is your Kokoro, and who do you have to become? Thank you.